Welcome to the Resilient Rainer, the premier podcast focused on mental performance for equestrians and improved horse show performance. Whether you're a rookie rainer or a seasoned competitor, this show is for riders who want to take their skills to the next level and achieve their full potential in the show ring. I'm Nicole Burnett, and I'm a master mindset coach who's obsessed with helping you achieve all those horse dreams you always thought were impossible. Join me each week to develop a show-ready mindset and gain the competitive edge you need to compete with confidence. Hey there, podcast friends, resilient rainers, and more, because I know that all of you guys are so much more than rainers. We've got rainers, we've got cow horse, we've got barrel racers. I know there's a couple ropers in there too, and... I'm so glad that all of you are here, really. I say this, or at least I try to say this every podcast, because I am so grateful for every single one of you who are here, who think this is cool along with me, and who really appreciate the impact of the mental performance on your writing. Like, I'll preach it from the heavens, because 80% of your success as a writer has nothing to do with your horse, has nothing to do with your training. It's all about everything inside your brain. Okay, let me just step off my soapbox. (laughs) So today's podcast is just kind of this informal chat here between friends. And for today's topic, I wanted to share five things that you can do. Five tips to improve your writing where you don't need a horse, okay? And they're not just mental coaching tips. So Let's do it because sometimes maybe you're on vacation or maybe your horse is laid up with an injury. Maybe you're laid up with an injury. Like things happen. And so the reason I want to share these tips is that it's so easy to get caught up in the riding part and the horseback part. And I mean, I get it. Like that's so fun, right? I love being in the saddle. I love anytime I can have a horse on a lead rope, I can be horseback. Like it's a good day if we've got that going on. It's a good day. And I love that. And as much fun as I have, because I have a blast. If you take your horseback riding seriously, your horsemanship, your equestrianism, whatever you want to call it, if you take it seriously, then you'll agree with me, and this is a non controversial statement, that we're athletes. All right. And I feel like sometimes this is controversial, but I'm going to assert that it's not controversial because we're athletes. The horses are athletes. Absolutely. But so are we as riders. And so when you adopt that paradigm, that oh, I'm an athlete too. It's not just my horse. The only natural response is to have a more holistic approach to improving yourself as a horseman. And so from there, obviously there are things that we can do as riders when we're not in the saddle, that will help our game and help improve our riding in the saddle. And if we really want to just go to the mat here for this, how long do you ride your horse for, right? You probably ride somewhere between 20 minutes to an hour. That's pretty typical, right? If you have a short ride, maybe it's 20, 30 minutes. Maybe your average ride is about 40, 45 minutes. Maybe it's an hour. But usually we're talking somewhere between 20 to 60 minutes per ride. That seems pretty reasonable. But here's the other thing. Even if you as a rider, so most riders are not riding as their full-time job. They're not riding eight hours a day. And even if you could ride eight hours a day, it's not your horse physically is, you know, it's not very fair to them to like, oh yeah, your horse needs to be ridden eight hours a day every day. Like that would be overdoing it. Okay. So that's kind of your context here of, of course, we want to improve our riding skills. And how can we do that in a way that is, you know, the least wear and tear on our horse just to be kind to them. Oh my goodness. I'm smiling so much today because I live in Utah and the sun has finally come out. It was sunny today. There are these beautiful white fluffy clouds. The sun is shining. Yesterday, I was outside, and I very carefully put sunscreen on my face because I always do sunscreen on my face, and then I walked outside and completely forgot that I was wearing a tank top and burned my shoulders. I am just so sun-addled and happy. It's fabulous. 
Okay, so five tips to improve your riding, even if you're not in the saddle, even if you don't have a horse. So the first one, I'm going to respect here this mind-body connection, and that is improve your physical fitness. We know that being fitter helps our horses to perform better. And it's not surprising, of course, that then being fitter helps us ride better. When your core strength is good, when your legs are good, oh my gosh, if you've ever ridden a horse, so this is, you know, you as my audience, you understand this, right? You know we don't just sit there as riders. Like, it's an insult somebody says you're a lump on a log, okay? And so if you can get stronger, if you can get fitter, that's going to do nothing but improve you in the saddle. In terms of, you know, what should I do if I hit the gym? You don't even have to go to the gym. But basically, we're looking for some combination of strength training and cardio. Strength training is doing squats, doing push-ups, back in those hay bales. Cardio, cardio is, I know that's the one that gets me. Strength training is fun for me. Cardio, I feel that a little more. Um, but you feel it, right? When you're riding faster and you're like, oh, cardio would be helpful in this moment. So if you don't like running, I don't like running. There's so many other fun things that you can do. You can do kickboxing. You can do dancing. But just, I don't know, jump rope. Do something to get your heart rate up. Do some strength training. Do some cardio. It'll be great. Yoga and Pilates is also great. That's going to help so much with your flexibility, your core strength. These are amazing assets for us as riders. Okay, the second one, I see this both when we're at home and it comes up a lot for folks. I like to touch on it in coaching when it comes to being at a show, which is just pay attention to how you're fueling your body. What are you eating and drinking? Because sugar, caffeine, that is not just food, okay? And this is kind of a tough one, and I am absolutely not shaming anybody for what you eat, what you don't eat. That is not what that is about. I understand when we've got early mornings, when we've got late nights, and we've got all of our money going to the horses, okay? Like, I get it. I get that it can be very easy to eat some fast food, to eat just some cookies, some chocolate, and I'm not saying that you should never have caffeine. I'm not saying you should never have sugar. Absolutely not. I am just saying, if we have that paradigm that we are athletes, is it helping you and supporting you reach your goals, or is it making your life a little more challenging by what you're fueling your body with, right? And so you want to make sure, you know, we care, we obsess over our horses and their nutrition. So are you also taking care of yourself? Are you getting fiber? Are you getting vitamins? Are you getting protein? Are you getting fuel in your body so that you can fight off any sort of illnesses that might come up? Because there can be kind of a cesspool of germs if we're traveling with our horses, right? Can you fight off those illnesses? Are you getting the fuel you'll need to have the energy to perform? Getting something in the concession stand is fun. Only eating concession food for days on end, you probably don't feel very good. I don't feel very good. Um, so just planning ahead and packing some food to bring with you to a show can be really helpful. Or if you're going to, you know, on the rodeo road, have you packed any of your own food just to make it easier on yourself to not have to figure out how you're going to get food with your big old rig and just having food that, you know, is going to give you the energy that you need and help you to feel your best. So this is absolutely not shaming anybody about what you eat. I absolutely love and enjoy food in all its varied and wonderful forms. I'm just saying give a little bit of thought to what you eat and how you fuel your body. And if the food that you eat is really nourishing you and giving you the energy you need to ride your best. Okay, the third one here is my personal favorite, which is get yourself some mental coaching. Okay, let me tell you. Top riders, champion riders, they got that cowboy swag, okay? You got to have that mental strength. You got to have that attitude of a winner, all right? Champion's mindset. It is a very real thing, and it can be your alter ego. I don't care. Love alter egos. But you've got to have that mental game. It's got to be going on. And you can get it from me. You can get it from anybody else. This moment when I say get you some mental coaching, I'm just saying get you some. 
right? It doesn't have to be from me. If you don't resonate with my style, the way I talk, the way I teach, doesn't matter. Like, I'm not the only one who does this, right? There are so many different coaches. There are so many different teachers. There's different styles. But go get you some. Get you some mental coaching. This helps writers with so much, all right? This is going to improve your performance in the arena. And it doesn't matter if you are training at home or if you are competing. And let me repeat myself. This is for every writer. It does not matter if you are a world champion or if you just started writing last week. This is for all ages, all disciplines, all abilities. This helps you so much if you have a lack of confidence, if you are struggling with nerves, pre-competition jitters, if you have performance anxiety. This is about just developing your internal mental toughness, right? You got to have that like John Wayne, okay? We got to have that like, you can do this attitude. This is about processing and dealing with your failures, your setbacks, your mistakes. We all make them. Are you handling them in a productive manner? This is about improving your focus, having positive habits. Another big one too is strategizing and your strategies, your strategies for being in the show pen, your strategies and goal setting of what is your goal going to the show? What is your goal for this, you know, the season? What is your kind of overarching goals and strategies with your horse in general? These are all things that fall under mental coaching. And like I said, when I say get some mental coaching, it doesn't have to be with me. I love this stuff. I will help you. But just find somebody to help you with this. This is so key. All right. Fourth thing to improve your writing without a horse. This is my inner student coming out here. <laughs> Read something, okay? Read something. Do some research. Watch a YouTube video, all right? This is so cool because, you know, sometimes you have to hear something like five times before you really understand it or how sometimes you hear something and somebody else says it and you're like, oh, magically I understand it I get it it happens and it can be really frustrating when you see it happen in your children or in your spouse and you're like I already told you that the same thing is going to happen to you as a writer so just embrace it right read a book read a book about writing read a book about training read a book about how horses think go watch a video like there's so many amazing resources out there to just learn just learn all right this is so cool because the more that you're reading, the more that you're learning, the more that you're watching some YouTube videos, whenever you encounter a situation, a challenge in your training, you're going to have so many more tools in your toolkit, all right? We all talk about that training toolbox and the training toolkit. The more tools you have in that, amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, and then the fifth one is watch. I know I said YouTube videos, but when I say watch, I just literally mean watch. And so this could be YouTube videos. This can be auditing clinics. This can be, you know, call up your bestie like, hey, can I watch your lesson? Like, do you mind? Because it's amazing. This can be watching people in, I know I said you don't need a horse, but this one sort of involves horses. But like I said, you can watch videos. You can watch training series. You can ask your friend if you can watch their lesson you know, audit a clinic. This is just about watching and learning because it's amazing where you'd be like, oh my gosh, my trainer tells me that all the time, but I didn't understand it until I saw the same situation happening with somebody else. You're like, oh my gosh, now I get it. It totally makes sense to me now. The other thing is that, you know, when you see different teachers and different styles of how do they provide feedback? How do they make corrections? How are the horses responding? How are the riders responding? It's just, you learn so much. You learn so much. And of course, if you don't want to watch riding, you know, like learn about that horse massage therapist. There's so many cool things, but this is just more and more learning. And the cool thing about this is that sometimes, for example, like I'm a rainer and I love watching rainers, but I've been watching so many more barrel racers and it's fascinating. And so I do have barrel racing clients. I like to always know as much as I can. And so all of a sudden, you know, you'd be like, so you're like, why are you watching barrel races? And you're like, it's amazing. I'm learning so much. And 
So it influences me both as a writer, and then I can be an even better coach the more you know I understand about the technicalities as well as the mental aspect. So those are five tips for you to get you up in your game, improving your writing. You don't need your horse for this. So just have fun, and we'll review it. So again, you're going to, what, what did I say? Yes, physical fitness. Physical fitness helps. What are you eating? Watch your diet. Um, just in terms of are you really fueling your body with the energy it needs? Third one, get some mental coaching. It'll help you out in so many ways. Four, go read something, improve your mind. And five, just go watch something. All right? Keep it super simple. Super simple, guys. And if you love this, if this is your jam, if you do want some mental coaching, come work with me in Resilient Rainer Academy. I would love to have you. That is all about getting you confident, getting you that champion's mindset so that you can go crush it and have fun and just start leveling up. All right. So love to see you there. Thank you so much for being here and we'll talk soon.